What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're gonna to be talking about iOS 13.1 beta 2. So we're gonna be talking about how it's been running for me over the past week or so. I've been using it every single day on my iPhone 10s Max here as well as my iPad Pro and also my iPhone 10R. So of course we're gonna talk about the performance, the battery life, some of the new features and changes, some of the new bugs, bug fixes, all that fun stuff in this video. But before we talk about that, I do just wanna mention that of course tomorrow is the annual September Apple event where we're gonna see the new 2019 iPhones announced. We're also going to see potentially the new Apple Watch Series 5 and other hardware products from Apple. And of course, we will also see iOS 13 officially announced with an official release date. Now, we'll be streaming live here on YouTube tomorrow at around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The event starts at 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm not going to be streaming the actual event. I'm just going to be streaming my reaction and things like that because Apple does send copyright strikes if you do stream the actual event. So I'm not going to be doing that. But you guys can come and chill with me, just talk, and you'll see my reaction to everything. We'll just answer some questions and things like that it's always a fun time i usually stream for about four to five hours on these days so definitely come back to the channel tomorrow for all of that coverage but anyways let's get back on subject with this video where we're talking about ios 13.1 beta 2 and how it's been running for me on all three of my devices here again i use it daily on the iphone 10s max this is my daily carry this is the phone i use every single day i also use my ipad every single night so i've been using it a lot on ios 13.1 beta 2 and then i also use my iphone 10r every few days every other day or so uh, so i do have experience with all these devices on 13.1 beta 2 over the past week or so and there actually are quite a few changes and bug fixes since my initial ios 13.1 beta 2 video so one of the first things i noticed with ios 13.1 beta 2 is siri so siri actually sounds even more realistic now than it ever has in previous versions of ios it's actually scary because it sounds like a real person let me just let you guys hear an example roses are red violets are blue haven't you got anything better to do here's one i've been practicing Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I can do this all day. So yeah, uh, that's getting pretty annoying. But anyways, you can see how realistic it sounds. I mean, it doesn't sound like a robot anymore. It's almost like you can hear the, like just the lisp. I don't know what it is. It just sounds like more, more human-like in iOS 13.1 beta 2. And it sounds really good. I really like the improvements constantly that Apple is making to Siri. So another change comes inside of the notes application. So if you do have a link inside of your notes application, you can go ahead and 3D touch on it and you do actually get link previews. So you can hide and show link previews inside of the notes notes application now where you could not do it before and you'll actually notice if you hide link previews that the when you 3d touch it actually looks much better on 13.1 beta 2 now so in 13.1 beta 1 the little uh, preview right here wasn't as clean looking as that it was kind of ugly and you could tell it wasn't complete so now we have a much more complete and simplistic look for the menu there. Also now when you ask Siri to call somebody, it will actually auto switch to speakerphone. So if you tell Siri to call somebody, it won't just be you know in the earpiece because obviously Apple knows that you're gonna be far away if you're asking Siri to, to call somebody. So it's actually gonna switch it to speakerphone by default, which is really nice and convenient. Now this next change doesn't really have anything to do with iOS 13.1 beta 2, but it is something new with Apple. And that's that Apple Music actually is now in beta on the web. So there's now a web version of Apple Music. It's currently in beta. You can get to it by going to beta.music.apple.com. So this means that you don't have to have an iPhone now to be able to use Apple Music. You also don't have to have an iPhone or a Mac. You can do it on like a Windows computer uh, just by going to this in the web browser, which is pretty nice. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was an email from Craig Federici, and this is actually on scheduled iMessages. So somebody sent in an email, somebody from Reddit, but basically somebody emailed in asking about scheduling iMessages and we got a pretty detailed response here. So you can see here, Craig actually responded to this email saying, this is something we've definitely considered and something we continue to consider. Of course, it does come with a bunch of complexity. And then he bullet points some things right here saying how to represent unsent messages, support for deleting and editing pending messages, what to do if someone sends you a message when you have outgoing messages pending. And of course, the social concern that we may end up sending the messages at a time that you're not available to respond to any replies that come back. So I wanted to share this because I thought it was pretty interesting to see such a a detailed response and basically showing why Apple may never have scheduled iMessages and basically those bullet points were the main reason like kind of the issues that Apple is facing with something like this so let me know down in the comment below if that's something you'd be interested in are you interested in scheduling messages I know there are shortcuts for that out there but to be native in iOS is that something you would be interested in I just want to see your guys thoughts me personally I, I'm neither here nor there I mean it'd be nice for like you know sending like uh, I guess birthday messages like every year once a year to somebody it'd be nice for that 
but I can't really see a huge benefit, at least not for me personally. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Now, another bug that was fixed in iOS 13.1 beta two is actually that now inside of a group chat. So if you have a group chat, it will actually now show the contacts name at all times instead of showing their phone number. So in the past in iOS 13.1 beta one, it would actually, if I added a contact, it would still show the person's number inside of the group chat message. So it wouldn't actually show their name. It would just show the number, even though the contact would have like the initial. So I knew the contact contact was there, but it was just a bug inside of a group notification or a group chat, sorry, inside of iMessage. So I'm glad that's fixed here in iOS 13.1 beta two. However, there are some new additional bugs now in 13.1 beta two. So the first one's on Instagram. So if you go ahead and turn your volume up or down inside of the Instagram application, you'll notice how there are no volume indicators anywhere. There's no volume HUD on the top, on the side, anywhere where it used to be. That did not occur in 13.1 beta one. That is a new bug here in beta two. And also the mail application continues to have issues so you can see here, I deleted some emails. So you can see here, I'm inside of the email application. I checked these off. I'm trying to check them off and archive them. You can see me press the archive button down here. You can see me keep tapping it, but nothing's happening. They didn't get deleted. And then I would try to scroll over and delete and still nothing would happen. They would just stay there and I would not be able to delete email. So the mail application continues to have issues even in 13.1 beta two. Unfortunately, it has gotten a lot better since iOS 13.0, the betas in there it has gotten a lot better since then, but there are still some issues with the mail application. So I really hope those get fixed obviously because I use the mail application a lot. I know you guys probably use it a lot as well. Another minor bug I noticed is that if you 3d touch and you look really closely at the icon, on, you will see that there is a slight border around the icon. It almost looks like it's just like the icon's not filling up the full space that it should. So I'm not sure how well you could see it. You do have to get really, really close. I'm trying to get as close as possible, uh, but you can see there that there's like a little white border on the edges of the application. So that is a bug here in 13.1 beta two. And another bug that persists here in 13.1 beta two is CarPlay. So CarPlay is still pretty buggy. It'll crash sometimes. Sometimes it won't detect that I have a phone plugged in. And I know it's not an issue with my car because it only has happened after iOS 13.1. Now, as far as performance goes, iOS 13.1 beta two has actually been fantastic for me. I've not had one single crash, not a single random reboot, no app crashes, nothing on 13.1 beta two. And the fact that we have all those bugs fixed as well, I think 13.1 beta two is definitely a nice update over beta one. Again, really my only complaint is that minor issue inside of the mail application and then CarPlay. But other than that, there's really nothing to do with like applications or crashing. I don't have any issues with LTE or Wi-Fi really nothing. So iOS 13.1 beta two is extremely solid, definitely better than any of the iOS 13.0 betas and definitely an improvement over iOS 13.1 beta one as well. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life has also been better than beta one for me, which beta one was very good for me. iOS 13.1 beta one had very good battery life for me, but beta two is even better. And I would say that this is definitely better than iOS 13.0 beta eight as well. So, and I would assume it's gonna be better than the GM build of iOS 13 as well. Because see here, this is my average. First of all, my battery health is at 94% here on my iPhone XS Max. Uh, you can take a look at my graphs here. Obviously this is kind of skewed because I do charge my phone throughout the day, which I do highly recommend. I highly recommend if you can charge your phone, charge it. Doesn't matter what your percentage is at. Uh, but anyways, you can see here kind of my, my usage. You can see I've been using my phone quite a bit lately. If I go to my last 10 days here, you can see uh, it's kind of skewed because I did have like 14 hours of screen on time the other day. You can see there, that is basically my breakdown of my applications used and my battery usage, but it's actually been really good. I noticed myself getting through a day pretty easily, you know, I come home to about 20 to 25% remaining, which is better than the 15 to 20% that I had on like 13.0 and 13.1 as well. So battery life is definitely looking good so far on the iPhone XS Max. It's really good on my iPad as well. The iPhone XR, it's good as well, but I just haven't used it enough to really say for sure that it's much better. Uh, but I have noticed that's much better on the iPhone XS Max and the iPad since I do use those more than I do the 10R. So let me know down in the comment section below if battery life is better for you on beta two, if it's worse, just tell me how your experience is with battery life and performance here on 13.1 beta two. So that is iOS 13.1 beta two. If you guys have any other features, changes, bug fixes, bugs that you're facing, anything at all that I didn't mention in this video, definitely leave a comment down in the comment section below. I do like reading those and I will sometimes, you know, read off comments, uh, people that had issues and things like that. So let me know your experience with iOS 13.1 beta two. And again, tomorrow, September 10th is going to be the Apple event where we the 2019 iPhones and we'll probably get the iOS 13.0 GM as well. So I'm not sure how we're going to do that as beta testers here. I'm not sure if we're going to have to downgrade from 13.1 and go back to 13.0 GM. It doesn't really make sense from a developer standpoint since we're all going to be on the developer program 
the GM is only going to be available to developers. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how that's going to work. Of course, I will make a video on that here on the channel. So definitely stay tuned for that. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, I will be live streaming. So definitely come back to the channel tomorrow. I will answer all those questions, anything you want to know in that live stream. Of course, we're going to be reacting to all the new Apple products, the new software, the new tile tracker, the new tile competitor that Apple is supposed to be releasing, all kinds of things. It's going to be fun tomorrow. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. A ton of new videos coming up. I did take a little bit of a mini break just to try to get my mental state back uh, because I know this month is going to be so busy. I needed to take a break before this super busy next few months, really. So I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. It's going to be a very busy fourth quarter here for the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.